What will never be the same again, once the pandemic is over. Time spent with my kids. Pre-pandemic I would leave the house 5 days a week at 6.15am to commute to the office, usually before anyone else in my house is awake. And I'd get home most evenings just in time to put them to bed. I'll never go back to that. The past 8 months I've actually seen my boys grow up in front of my eyes and I get lots of quality time with them every day, even with work from home. I know now what I was missing. Yup, right there with you man. Only positive to come from this whole mess made me take a step back and rethink my life. Hopefully your boss will finally admit that all his dumb meetings actually could have been emails all along. Everyone at my work got zoomed out, so we have one day a week where no one can schedule a zoom meeting. Everything has to be handled via email or you have to provide a written justification. The zoom fatigue is very real. My marriage. My wife and I had to work from home together separate jobs from March until September, when she had to go back to the office. I'm still working from home. During this time, we became increasingly closer. I have heard so many stories of marital problems being caused by COVID. I literally miss my wife every day she has to go to work. I meet her at the door like a ducking puppy. They say absence makes the heart grow fonder. Sometimes forced proximity does too. My dogs have expected me to basically be around all the time and rub their bellies 24, 7. Small businesses. As a kitchen worker, I'm very concerned about our industry. So many independent restaurants have closed down in our town. Like, one, three at least in the past months. It's depressing because we all have a deep passion for our careers. And we are just watching it all crumble. Most of the mom and pop stores in my town are gone forever. Some of these stores I grew up with, the Nickel Arcade, the tiny French bakery my aunt took us to when we got good grades, the only ramen shop open after 10pm, my favorite donut shop, the fancy British tea shop I never had a good date in, but many London fogs that were utterly perfect, the only dim sum place, the handmade mochi and tea shop, the only cigar shop in town to get fancy cigars. I lament the death of all these tiny businesses I took for granted. I always thought they'd be around. Now my community is left with just brand name box stores. No more originality and flavor. Just closed sky rise buildings surrounded by a garishly lit Dennis, Olive Garden. And Target. I feel for you. My favorite tea house closed. Among many other small businesses I adored. A massive amount of people now know they can work from home. I knew I could before, but my overlords wouldn't allow it, and just how fast mine took it away, as soon as it was convenient for them. Edit I should also mention, that I have seen my manager once, since the pandemic started, and a grand total of 3 times, since he was hired. I haven't seen the head of the department in almost 2 years. I'm on the night shift at a hospital. I've only seen one patient in the office, since the pandemic really started. My existence in this office is pointless. I could do this job anywhere. So, after reading a few of the comments and checking the number of new cases in the area, I sent my manager an email asking him what our department is going to do. I know the answer. It will be nothing. Even while the CEO sends out weekly updates telling us we should work from home if able, this department will continue to remain in the office because it is run by clowns. I never understood this. Isn't it cheaper to not pay for office buildings or commutes? Lots of bosses don't trust their employees. Others think there's some sort of team spirit fostered by seeing each other every day that's necessary. Some prefer working in an office over working from home and are willing to force everyone else to be there to keep them company. Working in an office, particularly in Japan. I live in Japan. Going to the office and spending all day here is a deep cultural tradition. Asking your manager at a traditional Japanese company to work from home regularly is on par with asking them Hey I just realized I'm dragon kin. Can you please work with the cafeteria to put live cats on the menu? You would get the same reaction. Even in cases of personal illness or for mother-in-law emergency. So many companies here, even in the early covered days, flat out publicly said ha, no, we will never be doing that work from home thing. Sorry, that's laughably naive. Then, 
the country issued a declaration of national urgency not an actual emergency, as that would entitle the gov to be actually accountable to the livelihoods of the people. Just a very strong arm public stance, and shaming businesses into following suit. Literally those same companies issuing the statements above were scrambling the next week to get their staff safely working from home, online, using remote meeting tools, etc. So, that was a big game changer. Still, everyone was thinking, once the urgency order is lifted, we'll all be going back to work as normal. Well, the urgency order lasted a few months. And those traditional Japanese businesses saw what happened to their bottom lines when they no longer had to pay for electricity, heating act, cleaning, office equipment and maintenance, subsidized travel expenses to from work, soft items like coffee and snacks, etc. And so many of them now are singing the praises of a sensible work from home policy and planning for even long term work from home options. Now the society is changing very rapidly to accommodate working from home. More people recently are less looking at buying their first house apartment in crowded Tokyo outskirts close cubebs, and looking more to buying one, two hours away in the botanies, where land is actually affordable and living is better. It's watching a sociological essay study unfold. Live. In slow motion. It would be great for health outcomes if everyone did space out a bit. Everyone might end up better off. That being said. There is also an emotional benefit to having your workplace separate from your home. Kind of some other in law to the whole, don't put a TV in your bedroom or you'll start subconsciously thinking of it as a place to watch TV and have a harder time falling asleep. Obliviousness to how many things I touched between hand washings. I used to work retail cashier, and the way money smells is so ducking gross. I'd help count cash store cash at open clothes and money just stinks. At the time it was like yeah it's gross, but I'll just wash my hands before lunch. Meanwhile, I'd be rubbing my eyes and nose, biting my nails, stocking food, touching my face. I'm genuinely wondering how I didn't get some kind of plague before all this. Probably the grossest thing people don't think about that I learned working retail is a lot of packages in the freezer and refrigerated sections have snot on them. When you are in the cold for so long your nose runs a lot. But they expect you to finish 10 hours of work in 6 hours. If you take the time to blow wipe your nose every time it drips you get yelled at for being too slow. So the back of your gloves become a quick and disgusting tissue replacement. Not to mention, when a drop falls out 10x quicker than normal for some reason and lands right on the package. Well it's only on the packaging, so it's not a big deal. Remember that next time you open up a bag of shredded cheese and stick your hand in it. Edit since people liked that one you might also want pay attention to lids caps for food drinks. If it isn't attached with a sticker or plastic, wash it before it contacts the food drink. There's about a 1 in 10 chance that the cap was off in the box and it can get hella dusty if it sits in the back for a while. Office life. My company has already announced that once we are allowed to go back, we'd only be going once or twice a week. It seems many realized how feasible working from home is. They told us we aren't going back until July. This is true. And even then we will be working from home 4 out of 5 days a week. And then there's me who has not missed a day of going into work through this whole pandemic. Despite the fact that we had 11 cases pop up in the span of 3 days last week, we are still all required to come in. I'm quarantining with what might be covered since last Friday the first time I haven't gone in in 11 months and the leadership still wants me to work. I hate my boss. No kidding. You should hate him. Just got my positive test result a few minutes ago. This wouldn't have happened if we had shut down and started working from home immediately when people started testing positive at my workplace. Money over everything I guess. I will not take hugs for granted. Yep. My mom passed away unexpectedly in October. Because of my asthma, my mom took extra precautions around me and hugs were completely off the table. The last two times I saw her, I tried to hug her goodbye when I was leaving. And she said no. Of course I respected that. And we did an air hug. When I found out she died, the first thing that went through my head was the fact that I had not hugged her since January and I never will again. There's mother in lawlians of others in my shoes, and it's ducking heartbreaking. Edit wow.
Thank you all so much for the kind, beautiful words and love. My heart goes out to all of you who lost a loved one and are grieving. As well. If you can't hug someone you love right now, let them know you love them in some way. It's so important and something we all take for granted too frequently. My attitude towards my entertainment backlog. Previously I used to look at my PlayStation library or my Netflix list and think if I just had a few weeks off, I could make a serious dent. I've had more than a few weeks off and my backlog seems, if anything more endless. I'll probably be in the retirement home with that little voice in the back of my head going Peaky Blinders is meant to be good. Should get on that. You could die tomorrow and never find out just how good Peaky is. My bank balance. In the words of the great Tiger King himself, I'm never gonna financially recover from this. It's annoying how seemingly quickly my life went from talking about where we wanted to buy a house to discussing the posse brother in lawity of moving back in with my parents for a while. RIP live music career. You will be missed. Edit shameless plug time. If you're anywhere near Central FL and need instruments sound lights video wall and some social distancing conscious text for a party, speech, wedding, literally anything, there's a whole warehouse link worth of neat stuff gathering dust. D. I'm afraid that a lot of karaoke and spas in our country will go out of business. My waistline. I had finally started working out 5 days a week, eating healthy, going to bed on time, etc. I kept that up for about 3 months and 1 month into covid before losing the mental strength. I gained pretty much all that weight back and I'm pretty bummed. On the bright side. My younger brother has finally gotten his shit together and looks better than he has in years. Standing next to someone after they sneeze. Today, I watched some lady pull down her mask, sneeze with her mouth fully open, spit flying everywhere on the product. When the line leader called her out on it, she got angry and started ranting. Left after lunch, I gave a dude in front of me in line Saturday mad shit for that. Talked loud shit to him. Then loudly asked the clerk to sanitize her hands before touching my stuff as he'd been picking and rubbing his nose to boot. Nasty methodica. My definition of personal space. Edit holy crap. I haven't logged into reddit since I made this comment and it blew the heck up. Thanks for the awards all. Although the hugs troth is kind of miss the point. LOL. I've always felt uncomfortable when customers get too close to me at work. Now I just feel validated when I keep trying to step away from them. Dentist here. I just get closer. Costco free samples. Drinking fountains. Some people deep throat the faucet. As a nursing assistant, I will be forever row, so hesitant to get near someone particularly the elderly who like to cough directly at you without my eye shield and mask. What the heck is up with old people coughing straight at you? Actually though, no sense of self-awareness or consideration. All you can eat buffets. No joke. Pandemic in UK started March 13th. I was super lucky cause my birthday was March 12th and still is now I think about it. And I went to my local buffet and I ate to my heart's content. Chances are I was one of the last people in our town to experience the joy that is an infinite birthday cake. Edit wow. Amount of people who share a birthday with me and have seen this post seems too many. Fantastic. Eh. My birthday is March 12th too. Healthcare workers going to work without a mask on. Definitely took for granted seeing my co-workers smother in lawing faces during my long shifts. This. I started my job at a hospital in May and it's funny to see my co-workers take their masks off briefly because I've worked with them for 6 months and didn't know what their face looked like. Yes, I was freaked out because this man was walking quickly towards me in our parking lot and motioning at me. Turns out to be none other than the dude I had been orienting for several days and I had just never seen his whole face. Food delivery just being dropped off on your doorstep. Remember when you had to go outside and make eye contact like some kind of person? No more. My friends. Just leave it outside and I'll get it when I'm ready. No more scrambling to find pants when you're half-baked and hungry. I'm a delivery driver myself and I can tell you I appreciate it just as much on my end. 
I don't gotta deal with gross people or weird shit. Just drop that shit off and run. Shopping will continue to be mostly online and malls will likely die out faster than they were already going to. Oh man. Going to malls and just walking around. I'm going to miss that. My faith in humanity. Blowing out the candles on your birthday cake. I never thought about it, but it is a rather disgusting tradition. For my wife's birthday, we cut the cake, gave her a piece with a candle, and that's one that she blew out. There's a bunch of things that are a bit unhygienic, but that are safe enough outside the context of a pandemic to be considered perfectly reasonable. This is one of them. The party tradition of sharing a joint is another one. Movies. Unfortunately. Cinema specifically. I'm sure a lot of production companies will take enormous losses or possibly father-in-law bankruptcy as no one is paying to go see movies anymore. The other issue being that no one can really make movies at the moment either. Travel bans all over. Logistic issues. Actors not able to be within close proximity to one another. And then all the post-production work that, for the most part can't be done from home. Little to no support for creative arts jobs from governments around the globe. Artists encouraged to retrain in other sectors. It's devastating. I'll have to start putting makeup on the lower half of my face. Crap. I have the impression that people have shown their worst part and this will have consequences for long time. As a current college student, I'm in favor of keeping recorded lectures. It's way more helpful than just having notes or slides. I had to take the day off for Yom Kippur and Mr. Class where the prof records her lectures and posts them online. It was amazing. For the first time in years, I didn't miss anything or had to rely on a friend for notes. People coming into work sick to show how dedicated to work they are or saving those days for mental health days meant ironically. No Justin. Don't come over to my desk with your coughing and runny nose telling me how bad you're roughing it at work to get some sympathy. If you're looking for sympathy, look under the dictionary between shit and syphilis. Anytime you're sick, you'll wear a mask. I'm amazed at all the times I flew before when I had a cold and didn't wear a mask. Video games. They feel like they did when I was a teenager again. Usually I feel guilty that I'm not doing something more productive. But right now I could care less about spending a whole weekend doing almost nothing but playing video games. Having been the funeral organist for numerous pandemic caused deaths, I can bear first hand witness to the sad fact that the for mother-in-laws and friends of the departed brought to their death by COVID-19 will never be the same.